Ah uh, yeah, what's good? It's your boy Red Tree Two Trap the Boy Choo Choo Go Faster. You're now locked into the Guest List Network. Stay locked. Welcome to the Guest List Network. Today we're gonna get the lowdown with DJ Hype. Tell us about your favourite era. I don't have a favourite era, to be honest. I think um, you always look back on stuff with fond memories, you know, and always I've kind of come to the conclusion in the last year that you always, no matter who you are, you always look back on stuff as if it was better than what, you know, it's not like the old days, but it is like the old days. Yeah. It never sits still. So what happens is I'm an old git still doing it, you know, like, my core audience from years ago will moan that you don't do it like you oh, it's different now it's not like it was and I'm always saying it because it's not meant to be you don't we're you know and I'm not against people who like the old style I like the old style but things move on and change and you kind of adapt with it and I enjoy the challenges I, I get frustrated I have times when I'm Argh! but I think I wouldn't have it any other way talking about change I mean, you've got thousands of records. Um, I mean, are you still playing vinyl at the moment? Mm -mm. You, what, did you switch to CD? It's DD. No, no, I switched to Serato um, last July. Um, why? Well, I, one, I was playing at so many places where, you know, like the local guy's playing, he's playing CDs, it's all fun, great. I come on, headliner, the needles are jumping, I can't do what I'm doing. It was just driving me nuts. And um, I got to the point where I'm looking at certain people with this Serato thing and it has a setting that stops the needle from jumping. And I'm like, I need that. Need but that. at the same time, I'm a record company. I'm trying to keep the vinyl alive. You know, I was caught between the two. Also, I, I wasn't mad on the, the early sound of um, the sort of digital compute you know serato tractor I, I, I wasn't a fan of it then it got to the stage at the beginning of last year where i'm looking at sort of people that are using all that and the, as a dj the benefit they're getting from it yeah. the frustration i'm getting from playing dubs where you know it's not the financial side i mean i was spending a lot of money on dubs they cost a lot but that's part of my job and i i'm you know i earn a decent enough living to cover that but the frustration of spending all that money and then you can't even play it. You know, also I'm known for, you know, cutting, scratching. Right. I wasn't really doing any of that. So I, I was starting to sort of get jealous of the digital DJ, watching the guy, <laughs> you know, like, there's, there's a lot of things you can do with it. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm still doing it on turntable. I'm still yeah. keeping it as close to, ter you know, like original turntablism as I can. And I enjoy it. Um, I, I, people look at me setting it all up and laugh, but I enjoy it. <laughs> Have you, have you got any plans for any uh, any forthcoming albums? Anything like that? Um, possibly a compilation album this year, but um, it's not sort of set in stone. I think the, the, the sort of compilation market has changed with the digital era. Drastic. So um, it's if I'm going to do... Usually I do two types of mix album. I either do an in-house one with just my artists or I do one with a major, you know, with a load of... You know, when the budget's big and you're licensing the best of everybody's tracks. Um, I, I've been in my head, it's like I want to do a mix, but I'm debating, do I do one or the other one is like, I might just start doing online, you know, a few free mixes that I give away. Over to you. Cool, away from drum and bass, if you were stuck on a desert island and you could only take three famous people with you, who would they be and why? Take none of them. What do I want to take? I take my family. It's so difficult, Kevin. Well, you asked the dumb quick. What <laughs> famous people? I'm and yeah, what am I going to take? <laughs> what, what the fuck do I want to take? I'm on alone on an island. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I we wish I had a celebrity with me. Yeah. Like, who's going to be good breeding material? I've got to reproduce my race, and I've got to bring myself back. So, yeah, I suppose I'd bring a chef and two fit birds. Yeah. So, is that me now? Now I've got to Turn tell your me. Turn phone off. It's actually David Platt from Coronet. I mean Chrissy Chris and Coronation Street. But yeah, the whole celebrity culture I hate. So please, you know, it's not. Uh, if anything, I'd rather they weren't celebrities. Okay. That's why I don't even go to D&B functions, because I'm like that. I don't like being around a load of people that are, you know, nothing against them. It's not, they're, they're not doing nothing bad. It's just, I, I don't know, I get weird. Even in even in what I do, you know, some places I turn up and people are like, 
you know, well, you know, as if you're, di and I'm like, mate, I'm not different to you. I just play record. You know, a bloke who acts on the telly, what, he's better than the, the nurse at the hospital or, or the, you know, who's better or worse? You know, you judge, pe I like people for the person. I don't give a fuck if you've got 10 million in the bank and you've got the latest Hollywood film or you're the guy that sweeps the road. I don't judge people, you know, judging by the character. No, I, just, I don't know. I find it even in our game, there's there's sort of, I ain't going to name no one, but I've watched it with certain individuals that yeah. come into a scene where they haven't had success yet and they're actually really nice people. You know, like you meet them at their lower end of their yeah. game and they're humble, they're nice, you know, and you talk to them, then they might have a couple of hits and the next minute their whole haircut's changed, <laughs> they walk in, you know, they, they, the whole <laughs> chemistry's <laughs> changed and you look at them like, nah, and I won't have it. What tips have you got for any, uh, any new DJs, producers, which are coming into the scene? Be honest in your approach. There's too many people that um, I meet that make music that actually isn't, that it's not ready. And it, you know, there's no disrespect. Everybody has to start at a certain stage and you work your way up. But where they're at a stage where they, the, the music's not there yet, it's not right. And you're telling them, they ask you your advice, you give them it and they, don't like and it. they get upset. And I'm like, you've got to take criticism. Nobody likes it. I don't like it. But, you know, if you're honest, you know, like I can give you an opinion. So I don't like this. I don't like that. Now, if you think I'm completely wrong, honestly, you're not going to listen. You're going to do what you're doing. But if you're honest with yourself, because I'm not always right. But I'm saying just be honest in your own. Like, I'm my own worst critic. You know, like I will sit there and like, it drives me mad, but I can't help it. But I'm very real about it. I, I'm like the whole ego thing, you know, like. It, I made it, therefore it must be good. You know, like you meet too right. many. Yeah, but it's just I think it's just part of human nature. A lot of people are like that. You know, if it was just the odd individual, but uh, you know, me being in this game for so long, there's one thing I recognise is a lot of people that make stuff. They want your opinion, and then you give it to them, and because it's not what they wanted to hear, they get upset. And I'm like, well, don't ask me then. You know. I don't go, right, what did you think of my set at Fabric last week? But if you're going to say you don't like it, don't say nothing. It's like, <laughs> I don't know, when people say to me, how did it go? I say, don't ask me. I say, ask them. I don't, you know, there's plenty of times I walk out of club, yeah, I loved it, I thought it was great, but you've got to ask them at the end of the day. You know, the audience, I, I think... Um, I'm doing the same, right? Because I will still be sitting here in 2011. <laughs>